reggae just extra with Ross Dennis. Don't forget to catch me if you see me fall. Yes. It's no longer news that the queen of reggae, Marcia Griffiths, fell victim to a fraudster. She was reportedly scammed of almost $5 million in a bogus real estate deal by the man, who was later arrested and charged by the fraud squad of Jamaica Constabulary Force. The scammer was released from prison after serving nearly 12 years for fraud. Fraud squad detectives say the accused man collected 30,000 US dollars and 250,000 Jamaican dollars from the reggae songstress as payment for a property. This is Ras Dennis welcoming you again to another video by Reggae Gist Extra. You are now watching Reggae Gist Extra's Marsha Griffiths edition. In this episode, we will take a closer look at Marsha Griffiths, her career, and of course the issue of her being a victim to a fraudster. Kindly remember to subscribe to this channel, like and hit the notification bell to be the first to watch our next video. A quick look into the fraud story, the man whose name was given as Ray Morgan was said to have initially approached the Queen of Reggae in June 2021 for her interest in purchasing properties, which were proposed to be used for the construction of a museum to preserve her legacy. The property in question supposedly cost $2 million US dollars and Morgan stated that he, along with overseas colleagues, would finance the construction. Morgan had proposed that he would lend Griffiths 500,000 US dollars to purchase the property for the museum's construction, but that it would require a payment of 30,000 US dollars in stamp duty and taxes. After paying the 30,000 US dollars and an additional $250,000, Marcia tried to contact Morgan who reportedly concocted stories about having delays. Marcia Griffiths reportedly called the police after she discovered that she had been defrauded by the man, Ray Morgan, who was recently released from prison after serving nearly 12 years for fraud, was subsequently charged by the fraud squad with obtaining money by means of false pretense and brought before the St. Andrew Parish Court, where he was remanded. He however admitted that he has more than 10 previous convictions, and he indicated that he was willing to repay the sum and has assured the court that he will have the funds available when the matter is to be mentioned. During the court hearing, Morgan reportedly said that a friend of his had offered $144,000 towards the $4.75 million that he is supposed to repay the reggae singer. You might be wondering what later happened to Ray Morgan. Kindly stay tuned for more just after this break. You are now watching Reggae Just Extra's Marsha Griffiths edition. Yes! Sister Marcia, are you feeling? Marsha Lyneth Griffiths was born in Kingston, Jamaica on November 23, 1949. She displayed an interest in music early on, singing in the church choir and regularly taking part in musical presentations at school, and she made her first steps toward a professional career when she was 15. Griffiths was singing at a friend's party when she was overheard by Philip Bosey James, a member of the vocal group The Blues Busters, who was visiting his girlfriend next door. James was impressed by Griffiths and arranged for her to take part in an upcoming talent competition. Griffiths wowed the audience and was immediately invited to perform on a television variety show the same evening. After this successful debut, she became a singer with Byron Lee and the Dragonairs, one of Jamaica's most popular ska outfits, and was signed to a record deal with Studio One, the pioneering label founded by producer Clement Coxon Dodd. 
Griffith scored her first major hit with the 1967 single Feel Like Jumping, a rocksteady number that charted in Jamaica and Great Britain, and she would also enjoy chart success with the tunes Melody Life and Truly before cutting her first album, Marsha Griffiths at Studio One. In 1969, she teamed up with Bob Andy of the Paragons as a duet partner, and when she moved from Studio One to the Trojan-affiliated Harry J. label, run by musician and producer Harry Johnson, Andy followed suit. Their interpretation of Nina Simone's Young, Gifted and Black became a major international hit in 1970. Bob and Marsha hit the charts again in 1971 with The Pied Piper, but in 1974 the duo parted ways and Griffiths released her second solo album, Sweet Bitter Love. In 1974, after Peter Tosh and Bunny Livingston left the Wailers, Bob Marley wanted to fill out the vocal sound of the group and added a trio of female singers to the Wailers lineup. Griffiths became a member of the I3s alongside Rita Marley and Judy Moat, and after making their debut with Marley on the groundbreaking album Natty Dread, they became an integral part of the Wailers on stage and in the studio until Marley's death in 1981. The I3s also cut a pair of albums on their own after Marley's passing, 1983's Beginning and 1995's Songs of Bob Marley. Griffiths continued to record as a solo artist during her downtime from the Wailers, cutting a pair of albums with producer Sonia Pottinger, 1978's Naturally and 1979's Steppin'. In 1982, Griffiths cut an up-tempo dance tune, Electric Boogie, which quickly became a major hit in Jamaica. The song gained an unexpected second life in 1989 when a disc jockey in Washington, D.C. began spinning the record on a regular basis. The seven-year-old track jumped into the American charts, boosted by radio airplay as well as the growing popularity of a dance inspired by the song, The Electric Slide. Electric Boogie also popped up on an album released by Island in America in 1990, Carousel. As the electric slide became a regular feature at weddings and family get-togethers, Electric Boogie became a perennial favorite and established Griffiths in the United States. Through the 90s and into the 21st century, Griffiths continued to record and tour internationally on a regular basis, releasing albums that run the gamut from polished love songs to roots reggae to fiery dancehall sides, duetting with the likes of Shaggy, Buju Banton, and Cuddy Ranks. She also reunited with Bob Andy for a pair of duet albums, really together in 1990 and Sweet Memories, in 1997. She was one of several high-profile guests to contribute to Toots and the Maytals Grammy Award-winning 2004 album, True Love, and followed it up with two more solo outings in 2005's Shining Time and 2007's Melody Life. In a tribute to her lasting appeal and wide stylistic range, VP Records' 2012 compilation Marsha Griffiths and Friends featured an impressive 38 collaborations culled from her vast catalog of work. Two years later, Griffiths was honored by the Jamaican government with the Order of Distinction. Returning to the studio, she celebrated the legacy of Jamaica's famed Studio One by covering a host of classic artists associated with the label and studio. The album, Timeless, was released in 2019 and featured renditions of songs by The Heptons, The Cables, and Jackie Opal, among others. Now, this is what happened to Ray Morgan, the ex-convict. In March 2023, Ray Morgan reportedly suffered a stroke and unable to walk. Mr. Morgan is not doing well at all. It doesn't look good. Senior Parish Judge Lorianne Cole Montague shared in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court. This latest development was another setback in Griffith's bid to be repaid $30,000 U.S. dollars, approximately $4.5 million, that Morgan skimmed from her. Thanks for watching and do remember to subscribe, give it a like and post a positive comment in the comment section below and I'll see you again very soon for another video. Many thanks for watching Reggae Just Extra with Ras Dennis.